Remember. Remember, did you know that word occurs 286 times in the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible? Remember. It occurs in a number of different ways. In our passage today, it says, remember the mighty works, the goodness that God has done. And then it lays them out for you, right? Well, I only gave you the first one. Remember, remember, and then it tells you about how the people were a wandering people. And in that wandering and movement from land to land, God was with them, always with them. God was there present in what was happening. Remember. And then it goes through what it is you to remember. You are to remember how a famine was come upon the land because the people had disobeyed God. But God had prepared for the famine by sending Joseph into Egypt so that when the people were starving and hungry, God saved them through the work of Joseph. But then, in that land, when the people forgot, who Joseph was and the power and command he had as they became just another set of foreigners who became enslaved to the people in Egypt. God again remembered his people. God remembered the people and sent Moses and Aaron to save them. God sent and then it lists them. Can you list all the plagues? The ten plagues that came. And that God brought them out of Egypt and gave to them food and water out of rocks and gave to them quails to eat. Remember. Remember the mighty works that God has done. This word remember is the word that the book that I'm using for our study this summer chooses for the Virgin Islands. And I thought remember was an appropriate word for this weekend. And it, they, the book, America's Holy Ground, talks about each of the national parks, 61 of them, although there are way more than that that are in the United States. But they talk about the ones that they have visited. And when they talk about the Virgin Islands, it says that when you arrive there, because you have to take a plane from Florida to St. Thomas, and then you have to take a ferry from St. Thomas to St. John. When you arrive, it says, welcome to paradise. A place of great beauty and a place that the authors of the book argue talks to about us about remembering. You can start with just the white sand a sign of the creator God. I mean, think about all the rocks that had to be crushed and moved and used to become that tiny white grain of sand that fills up the whole beach. Remember that we are so small and so young compared to that sand that has took thousands and thousands and thousands of years to create for that beach. And when you're in the Virgin Islands National Park, there is a trail that you can take that takes you past the petroglyphs. That in the Virgin Islands, in the National Park on St. John's, there were two sets of Native Americans that came. The first set came very early on and left these images drawn into some of the sides of the, the burial sites often, but also just drawn images in sacred spots. And on some of the trails that you can hike through the Virgin Islands, you can pass these petroglyphs. The second set of Native Americans came from the Amazonian basin, the Tano, and they settled on the island and created their own set of petroglyphs that you can see. That walk 
reminds us that this land, this holy land, has been holy for a very long time, that it was sacred to people who have come before us and are with us. And those people, the Tanners, they're the ones that, if you heard the music I played earlier, in the Caribbean, they have two styles of music that are from the St. John's area. They have fungi, and they have um, calypso rhythms. I mean, they play a lot of reggae, but it isn't like as if it comes from there. The Quelve music comes from there, but it's that sense of, um, it's those wonderful, cheerful, happy sounds where they make ukulele out, out of um, whatever they have available to make the instrument out of. And so these Tano people are the people that were there when Columbus arrived on St. John's. And so what we remember as we're walking through this island on its trails, we remember that that people encountered a group of people who came through, enslaved them, killed them, and raped them. That those old Petrogus tell us of the time when they were happy and healthy. There they are. Um, but we also remember that that happy, healthy wholeness that they had was destroyed as the waves of invaders started coming through, like the waves of invaders that are talked about in this poem, Psalm 105. That for the Israelites, they had successive waves of people that came through and changed and challenged and transformed their culture. On St. John, those waves began with the Spanish and Christopher Columbus. And it moved through to being mostly a Dutch island. But after Columbus and the Spanish came through, the island became known for its sugar plantations because what was a big thing to make out of sugar? Molasses and rum. <coughs> so in some of these images that you can see of the, the ruins, one of them is an old sugar plantation, and it shows the windmill that powered the sugar plantation. But one of the things that remembering does is it reminds us of those things sometimes we need to ask forgiveness for. Because what happened after they killed and moved the Native Americans was they brought enslaved Africans to the island. And as you're walking through those ruins, what story would you be told about the enslaved Africans? Because I was on Twitter the other day when somebody was on vacation and at a plantation, and he says, they were at a plantation in Georgia, right? And he says that the story they told was the story of idyllic paradise of happy slaves who were treated well. And yet we know the stories aren't happy and idyllic. We've made them that way in our minds because it's easier to remember and not have to actually do the work of forgiveness if it was ideal, idyllic and happy, a paradise, right? But if it was the stories that are untold, the stories that are passed down by word of mouth to the people that happen to them, the stories of pain, of being beaten, of children being sold, of families being separated, of losing your ability to determine your future for generations. The same as the Israelites who talk about God coming into that moment, remembering his mighty deed of freeing them. That when we're on the island of St. John's and we remember, 
we remember that our memories may need something that we need to cleanse. Because if you read Psalm 105 and then you read Psalm 106, Psalm 106 is on the side of you forgot us and let us be enslaved, right? Psalm 105 is on the you brought us and freed us, right? It's a like it's a happier sense of God came and rescued us, protected us, sought us out, and redeemed us. Psalm 106 is you left us there to be enslaved. There's a sense in which remembering can bring up both. And when we don't talk about the history, when we don't talk about what has happened, that welcome to paradise can make us forget that we have led to a lot of pain and tragedy. And even if it wasn't our ancestors, although being that my ancestors have been here both from the south and the north for a very, very, very long time. Some of my ancestors had to do bad things. And while we personally may not feel responsible, we collectively are. And that's what the Psalms try to teach us, is that what happened isn't about the personal did I do it did it happen to me? It's about the collective. How has this harm hurt someone else? And how can we, as the collective, heal that? Because when we're asked to remember, what we're asked to remember in the scriptures, in the biblical witness, is to remember what God has done. To remember to honor the covenant with God. To remember the poor, the widows, and the orphans, the strangers. It reminds Israel when they speak of remembering that who they are is defined in terms of who God calls them to be. And in the New Testament, when the word remember is used, one of the first and only places it's spoken in the New Testament is in that last week that Jesus is on earth. It's spoken in the trip to Emmaus when they are urged to remember the words that Jesus taught them. We're invited into a journey to remember that we are God's people, that we are called to a life and a work that allows us to recognize the mighty deeds that God has done, the creation of that amazing, wonderful island, those beautiful white sands, the white donkeys that live there, the turtles that breathe, which remember the mighty works. And when we're to remember the promises that God made, the promises that God made to Abraham and Isaac that God would be our God from generation to generation. That God would be our God through the ups and downs, through the things that we wish we could forget, through the memories that are horrible, that God will be our God through that all. Amen.